Hello Flight Simmers, this is Sanji from SimStation and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to do an ILS approach in the Boeing 737. So let's get right into it. Okay guys, as you can see we are now holding at Lazard and we're about to land at Tampa International Airport. Before we land an ILS approach, I need to show you guys what you need to see on the chart. Some numbers you should remember is the localizer frequency, your final approach course, and your decision height, or MDA. The localizer frequency allows you to capture the localizer, which gives you lateral guidance to the ground. Also keep in mind your missed approach, so if you have to do a go around, you can do it properly. Now, as we come down, we can see our glide slope. As we hit Jim Bob, we'll be able to capture the glide slope, and then from there we have to descend. So when we get to Jim Bob, we have to be 2,000 feet above sea level. Another thing to see is when you go all the way down, you can see your decision height and your MDA. If you're only doing a localizer approach, you need to set the MDA as 400. If you're doing a full ILS approach, you need to set your decision height to 21 feet, for example. Now that you all know how to see the information from the charts, I'll be inputting all the information into the FMC. So, the first thing we should put is the localize, localizer frequency. So we're going to come here. And our frequency was 108.5. So, I'm going to put it in this um, navigation communication. And it's in standby, and I'm going to hit the transfer button, and now it's the active frequency. The next thing we have to do is select our course heading, which is 187. So we're going to put 187, and we're going to do the same thing for both sides as well. So 108.5 here, and 187. Something you should remember is in your FMC, go to your departure and arrival, click go arrival, and be sure you have clicked ILS and your runway if you want this to work. And now we have everything configured for landing, we should go over the missed approach. So for the missed approach, it states that we have to climb to 500 feet, then turn right and climb to 3,000 feet direct to PI, the PI VOR. And then we have to hold at the PI VOR. So, uh, the PI VOR is right here. So what you have to do is take a slight right turn after you do the go around, and the PI VOR is there. And then you're gonna have to hold there. So in the FMC, if I go to legs, it has already told me to hold at the PI VOR, and it says 3,000 feet. So if I go to plan, and I go to step, here's my missed approach course. So I get to the PI VOR, and then I conduct the hold. So it automatically puts it in already, depending on my approach and my runway. Anyways, I'll see you guys when we hit, are about to hit the localizer beam. Before I get to the localizer and the glide slope, I should mention that in the charts, it states we need to be at 2,000 feet in order to capture, capture the glide slope. So in the autopilot, input 2,000 feet. And then, before you get, for example, to Jim Bob, you have to be at 2,000 feet. And Jim Bob is right there. So we need to make sure to get to 2,000 feet by the time we get there. And we're about to hit fatty. Once we hit fatty, we'll be able to capture the, the VOR localizer. So I'm going to arm VOR lock. Right now you should put your minimums. My minimums or my decision height is 221 feet. So in the radio section, I'm going to put 221. If you're doing MDA, be sure to do barrow. If you're doing decision height, do radio. A thousand ago. Okay, a thousand ago. There we go, as you can see we have hit the localizer. 
And what's really cool about Navigraph charts is that you can see your current location relative to the chart. So I can, as you can see, we have just passed Fatty and about to hit Jim Bob. Since we're about to hit Jim Bob, I'm going to activate Approach. This will allow us to capture the glide slope. Okay, we have just captured the glide slope. And now we'll be descending according to the glide slope and the localizer instead of RNAV. So now we can set our missed approach altitude, which will be 3,000 feet. And if you're doing an auto land approach, you'd be activating Command A and Command B autopilot. But since this runway is not Cat 3 or auto land capable, we'll just be doing a Cat 1 approach. So when we hit, by the time we hit 221 feet, we should have disengaged the autopilot and we should have sight of the runway. Okay guys, now we're at about 700 feet from the ground. I can see the runway and I'm able to take control. So I'm going to disengage the autopilot. We have disengaged the autopilot. And I'm going to disengage the auto throttles. It's a little hard to do this with Airbus controls, but we can manage. Yes, I can tell. Okay, I'm going back on the glide slope. Need some speed. Continue. I can see the runway and I have control, so we're good. Okay, we've hit 30. Let's initiate our flare. Ooh. I'm fired, guys. I don't know what happened. I thought that was a pretty good landing. I'll show you the replay. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to do an ILS approach on the 737. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see an Autoland tutorial for the Boeing 737. I hope you have a good day and goodbye.